the truth of girls. Hi everyone. Well, yesterday I uploaded a video about Pizzagate explaining why I think there is something to this thing, in, in spite of the fact that there is basis in fact and that it may run deep. There is also going on right now what I saw recently in a forum termed as conspiracy bloat. People start researching and they just add to it. And a lot of stuff that they add is is not factual. The conspiracy just kaboom, right? So I'd like to talk to you about the artwork, just the artwork. You're going to see what is fact. I'm going to tell you all the facts. Nothing here will be speculative. Everything I'm going to tell you is the absolute truth. So first of all, I'm sure that you, like many, have seen these very disturbing images going around of some artwork showing children being abused along with the caption saying that this is the artist whose work is displayed in Comet Pizza owned by James Alephantis in Washington DC. This stuff has been everywhere. I have a problem now where my hair always gets stuck in my glasses. I don't know why, but anyway. First of all, I want to show you um, the artwork. This is the artwork in Comet Pizza on the wall. It's not a very good shot, but you can see in the back uh, and it seems to be like a couple of women and I, they look like they're holding a decapitated head but from from how I where I'm seeing it I can't be completely sure but anyway it's a little creepy and notice the other one near it in red notice the colors okay here's the article that well maybe it's one that that really fed into this a lot the speculation of the art comic ping pong associated artist and SRA victim embeds pizza cry for help in cabalistic image now this is an article by Tracy R Twyman and she is showing you here the art of Kim Noble as she says there is an artist named Kim Noble whose name and work has been passed around by people investigating Pizzagate she does among other things representations of children being raped and tortured she goes on to say she claims to suffer from multiple personalities and that she's been on Oprah and featured on the UK's Guardian. Until last night, I didn't realize that some people were claiming she had made some of the art that decorates Comet Ping Pong and Pizza in Washington, D.C., the center of the current child abuse controversy. Note, I do not know this particular claim to be true. This is a really good place to come and have a look and where all the spirit conspiracy related stuff comes from and I cannot even show you the art I give you the link but I'm not gonna show I can't show you this one I mean I don't even want to look at it I'm not gonna show you that one I guess this one's okay that I'll show you just so that I mean it's disturbing but it's nothing explicit uh, I'll show you just so you get an idea for the style of art and the colors I'm just gonna do it the lazy way by turning my camera around Notice the colors. So this is purported to be the same person who is doing the wall art in Comet Pizza. See that right back there? Does that, it kind of look like this. If you see other ones, maybe you see the colors are a bit similar. I'm going to get to what the truth is. You're going to see all of it. Moreover, it's been reported that John Podesta's brother, Tony, has some of this artist's work in his collection. Where do I start? Okay, let's deal with who is this person, Kim Noble. Here is Kim Noble's website. Okay, go and see for yourself that this is in fact Kim Noble. And again, I don't want to show you her actual art. Not really, but you'll see for yourself when you get there. Now, as you'll notice, Kim Noble has multiple personalities. And all the different personalities make art. There's Abby, there's Anon, there's Bonnie. Dawn, etc. And the one that made those images that have been going around is her personality called Rhea Pratt. Let's let's get back to this art in Comic Ping Pong. The art on the walls of Comic Ping Pong is in fact not done by Kim Noble or her alter ego Rhea Pratt. It is the work of Arrington de Dioniso. Here's an article about him. An artist championed by Saint Laurent brings his paintings trans dancers to Brooklyn. And there's a corner of uh, a piece of work just so you kind of get an idea of the style. Now they're they're topless that's why I'm not showing the rest of it because I don't know what's going on with YouTube these days. Maybe they'll censor me. I don't know. Okay this is the guy who did the paintings that are in Comet Pizza. Arrington de Dioniso 
not Kim Noble, and not Rhea Pratt. Now, as for Tony Podesta's art collection, does he really collect Kim Noble's art? Because you've seen those pictures, those little, it's like there's like four pictures with horrible things depicted on it, bright colors, you know the one I'm talking about. So is this really in his collection? Well, here's an article, Inside Homes Private Viewing, where they discuss a little bit about Tony Podesta's art collection. Okay, what he has is some art by the painter Biljana Djurjevic from Serbia. And her paintings, some of them do show what looks like some forms of child abuse, could even be kind of pedo. However, we don't know which pieces of work he actually has in his collection. But what can be confirmed is that he collects the work of Biljana Djurjevic and that that art, go and look it up, go see what she's got in her art. It's right there on Google. I'll try to find one that's not super, super offensive. Okay, well here's one of some kids sitting around on a bench which is pretty tame. Some of the other stuff, not so tame. None of it uh, goes anywhere near as far as the art of Kim Noble. So somehow, these things got mixed up. Somebody figured that the art on the... Happening again. Somebody figured that the art on the walls of Comet Pizza was by Kim Noble. And they also thought that Tony Podesta is collecting Kim Noble. Neither of those things are true. While we're on the subject of Kim Noble, though, it is weird that in, in a lot of her art, oddly enough, th there are Im embedded words having to do with pizza and even ping pong and ping pong tables. And, and her work is all about having been abused. But, I mean, let's face it, if you went to a court and you said, look, this artist who has... X amount of personalities, makes paintings about being abused and they feature ping pong tables and pizza, the judge is going to say, well, case dismissed. So it is what it is, but it's not proof. I want to get into this spirit cooking thing. And what, you know what's really funny too is that at the time when the information came about it, out of, from the emails, these are from the Podesta emails, about the spirit cooking dinner that Tony was having. So it, it, it came out that this term came from a performance art piece done by the artist Marina Abramovic, of whom Tony Podesta is also a patron. And at that time, the same images of Kim Noble's work were circulating as being the work of Marina Abramovic. Marina Abramovic I mean, look, when you look at some of the work she does, clearly she's using blood, she's using goat's head. There's a lot of satanic symbolism there. There's no doubt about that. She also did, in 1997, an installation art piece called Spirit Cooking, which involved various bodily fluids, including coagulated blood, in a, a kind of ritual done in an art gallery. And what she said about it was that if we do it at home, it's a ritual. If we do it in a gallery, it's art. Now, I would say, if you're a Christian, you're not going to do it at home, and you're not going to do it in the gallery. I think some people have this idea that whatever you do in the name of art, it's okay because it's just art. Whether she's doing it as a kind of avant-garde art or really as a ritual, personally, I find it distasteful. But, look, I spent years in art school, and, and I know for a fact that in the art world, there's like a sub world, like not an underworld, but there's a kind of, there are different groups, you know, and there's one group that takes art really to extremes. And this is the group of which Marina Abramovic has been part for a long, long time. A taste for the transgressive, pushing body limits in contemporary performance art. The gothic body on site of art. Uh, the gothic body as site of art. You know, people usually when they think of art, they think of a painting or some kind of a thing that you can see. Uh, usually maybe something beautiful or something evocative or provocative. Art can also be an installation of objects and it can also be um, any kind of action and really just as far as they're concerned, the fact of doing it in the gallery makes it art. Literally, you could put a table 
in a gallery and eat your salad and call it art Be because of the dynamic now of the observer and the performer. This is like a kind of philosophical thing. These people tend to like to go and as it says here, it tastes for the transgressive. All the things that are taboo, especially involving bodily fluids. There are quite a few of these. Another one who came to mind when I saw this was Andres Serrano, who caused uh, quite a stir a few years ago with his Piss Christ uh, piece, which was a crucifix in a, a bottle or a container of urine and, and some of these things had blood mixed in. I mean, the, the whole point of this is to be profane. And doing it in this context, in gallery, now it's art. Like I said, it's philosophical and it's weird. I never liked it when I was in art school. The profane and the provocative is rewarded. I used to say, if you want an A, make your project about being a lesbian and set your vagina on fire. Um, they really get into bodily fluids. Also, blood of animals, carcasses. Check this one out. Art show featuring crucified animal carcasses, subject of protest petition. It's like they do it just to do it. Just to see how you react. The fact that you react proves that it's art as far as they're concerned. So, sometimes it's, it's not quite as profane, but still really offensive. Like, this goes way back in the 1970s. Adrienne Piper, I thought of her right away. She's probably maybe one of the pioneers of this kind of thing. And uh, here's a little bit from Wikipedia about her, that she would uh, basically go on the subway covered in a mixture of vinegar, eggs, milk, and cod liver oil and spend the week moving around New York subway and bookstores. Now, what kind of reaction does this create? Like performance art involving very much the reaction of your observers. What did Adrian Piper do? She went around smelling like a hobo and she called it art. Notice the use of bodily fluids. Notice the use of bodily fluids in Andres Serrano's work. There's also a focus on not just the fluids of the body, but the body itself and how far you can go. I'm not sure if you would count this one as art, but Henry Damon, the man who had his whole face transformed to look like Marvel's red skull, including cutting off part of his nose. Self-mutilation is it plays a part in this kind of stuff. Uh, there's another one, a Russian artist, Pyotr Pavlensky. Self-mutilating Russian artist says there's no greater evil than law-abiding citizens. This guy cut off part of his ear. I mean, really, there's like a, a real dark underbelly to the art world. And clearly, Tony Podesta ha has some affinity for this knows people who are involved with it, collects this artwork. And I think that that's what the spirit cooking dinner was about. It's pretty safe to say that a lot of people will look at this stuff and say, you know, this is perverted, this is sick, you're dealing with taboo stuff. One of the things Marina Abramovic did as performance art at one point was rebreathing, like she would like seal lips with the other performer and they would breathe in and out until they would each pass out from carbon dioxide uh, inhalation. Like that's how extreme her art is. And you know, if you find it offensive or taboo or perverted or anything, that just kind of gives them more reason to do it. Cause that's like the whole purpose for them of doing this is like pushing the limits in society of what, what is accepted as art. Like that's the whole purpose, pushing the boundaries. They're, be, they're a bit like the Gigi Allens of the art world, in a way. And, uh, and for sure, you can say, yes, Tony Podesta's a fan. That much is true. Is he collecting Kim Noble's artwork? Depicting uh, SRA? There's no evidence of that. And, and that's it. And, and I'm just here to tell you the truth about this, and that's what it is. The, where the conspiracy bloat comes in is where these images from Kim Noble's art keep showing up. Now it's Marina Abramovic's art. Uh, now it's, uh, it's What's in Comet Ping Pong. It's, it's Arrington de Dionisio's art. Now it's Buliana Djurjevic's art. Like every time any of these three artists comes up, like they're showing the work of temp Kim Noble, it has nothing to do with this. Now that you know the truth, now you can go look into all this other stuff and decide how bad is it? How offended are you?
but at least you're not just repeating some thing that you saw on the internet that it's not even accurate. So now you've got the information. So let me know what you think. Uh, thanks for liking this video. Thanks for listening to me, and I'll see you next time.